Questions over security at our county jails have come front and center after a series of escapes in Southern Colorado. Tonight, 13 Investigates explains how the buildings housing some of the most prolific criminals face zero oversight, potentially endangering the public. Here's investigative reporter Sean Rice with his special report, Crumbling Jails. Bend County, Colorado is home to nearly 6,000 people and the day-to-day -day operational costs associated with running their 94-person capacity jail is paid for solely by tax dollars. We can't afford to staff our facility for, for ourselves. Sheriff Jake Six says four dangerous inmates breaking free from his jail was due to negligence and a lack of standards. The inmates escaped through a boarded up kitchen roof turned jail cell in July. Six tells Cardio 13 investigates the numerous security failures were a result of a lack of funding, which left necessary infrastructure needs untreated for months. I don't blame the commissioners one bit for, I mean, everything. They, they give us what they can, um, and they, they struggle to find money just like we do. Um, so that's why we try and help and house for other counties, but we wind up in situations like this. So even some of the larger county jails here in the state of Colorado are not immune to the occasional jail escape. In fact, here at the Fremont County Jail earlier this summer, two inmates escaped through that burgundy door who were working as kitchen staff at the time who would typically take out the trash. But this time they ran all the way through this parking lot and scaled that fence. Hey, it's them. Hey, we got we got both of them. They're both going out. We got both of them. Those inmates, Rodolfo Varelis and Christopher Wallace, were found in a creek bed mere hours after the escape. Uh, human error. Oh, that was it. Sheriff Alan Cooper says a master control operator in the jail accidentally unlocked the door, giving the two inmates an opportunity to run. A situation he tells 13 Investigates would have been completely avoidable if he had more money to hire full-time detention deputies. My turnover on the, on the detention side is... Uh, great and right now I'm uh, I have 20 percent of my detention staff unfilled just running his jail day to day equates to 61 percent of his budget Cooper says he would need an additional nine hundred thousand dollars to fully staff his jail that is conditional on getting high quality applicants something that has been lacking so tell me where the majority of your funding comes from when it comes to the day-to-day -day county jail operation it comes from the taxes that are collected in Fremont County. Cardio 13 investigates found county jails face little to no oversight. They're not even required to conduct annual audits or inspections. Unlike more than half the states in our country, statewide standards for jails in Colorado are now in the works. I think there's been an, a, a recognition on the part of the sheriffs that it would be useful to have a set of standards that they're all sort of operating under. Democrat Rep Judy Amabile formed Colorado's first jail standards commission last year. I think the counties, the sheriffs are looking for, you know, if I'm doing X, Y, and Z, then that should be good. And if there's something I'm not doing that I need to do, maybe I don't even know what that is. The group, including Sheriff Cooper, is now in the process of developing legislative ideas to bring better oversight to county jails. I have actually looked at uh, my facility. There were, there were a lot of things in the physical plant that needed attention when I took office, and I depleted significantly my reserve funds to bring it into compliance. Those proposed requirements involve expanding mental health treatments, expanding staffing opportunities, and narrowing in on best practices for jail security so that inmate escapes are a thing of the past. But even if those standards are put into law, there is still a debate about how they will be enforced. Right now, there is no enforcement body to handle jail oversight, and it's only up to county sheriffs to oversee and manage their jails. But Cooper says no matter what, the only way to fix problems jails are facing is more money. That funding is going to have to come from the state because the counties simply do not have the resources. Do you think in this next legislative session some of these more rural county jails may may see a little bit more money coming in their direction? It's probably the session after this one. Things are slow, deliberately slow when you're making laws. Sean Rice, KRDO 13 Investigates.